Hello fellow astronomers and stargazers. I've done a few videos now on how to use the Sky Safari app and actually had a few questions from viewers on specific features. So in this video I'm going to quickly show you how to use the Sky Safari app to help you plan an observing session using observing lists. These can be really helpful. So I guess you'd call this a more detailed or intermediate approach than in previous videos, but hopefully it's also more helpful. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in. When you create a list, it gives you the ability to have the app highlight where those objects are in the sky. Let's go ahead and see that. So for example, we're going to go to Observe, Observing Lists, and you can see I already have several lists. Uh, these happen to be galaxies for a lab that I designed for my students. If you click on any one of those, you can go in and you can see all of the objects that are already on that list. Now if you look, some of the galaxies are kind of grayed out, those are galaxies that are below the horizon at this particular day and time. Now, we're going to go into Actions and Settings because that's where a lot more functionality is. You have the ability to sort your list by any number of different things. Probably the most helpful are going to be the magnitude, the rise time, or the set time, but you've got lots of options. The other nice thing is you can email the observing list to yourself simply by clicking here. Uh, it'll show up as a little bit of an odd file type in your inbox, but ultimately it's just a text file and you should be able to open it with Notepad or some similar program. Now what I want to see is where th all of the objects on this list are in the sky. Do that by turning on Highlight Objects and let's see what happens. Now you could just hit Done and hop back to the main screen, but I want to show you one thing real quick. If we simply go back to our list of lists, Notice how the Hubble's Galaxies is highlighted like this. That's a quick way to be able to look at your screen and know exactly which list is being displayed at any given time. Just so you know, Sky Safari 6 only allows you to highlight and display one list on your screen at a time. That may change in the future, but for right now it's just one. We're going to hit Done. We're back to the main screen. All of the objects on that list are now circled and label by name. You can see them whether they're above or below the horizon. You can forward the time and date, anything that you want to, and the app will keep track of where all of those targets are in the sky and you can see it at a glance. All right, so now that you've seen how helpful this can be, let's go ahead and learn how to work with it. We're going to create a new list and add some objects to it. So we're going to go Observe, Observing Lists, Create New List. Then we're going to go ahead and give it a name. Let's just say My New List. Done. Now there are a couple of different ways to add objects to your list. The most immediate way is to simply tap on an object in the sky, like Arcturus there. And if you go to Selection, you can simply add that selected object to your list with a single tap right there. Say I want it on this list, and there you go. The other place that you can find the ability to add things is, let's say you're, you've selected an object and you're reading about it in Object Info, and you're looking at the information, or you're reading the description, and you decide, yeah, that's something I want to go and find. If you hit More, there you'll also see the option to simply Add to List, and again, just pick which one you want it to be part of. And there you have it. Now, the last way that I'm going to demonstrate is helpful when you want to add a whole bunch of objects all at once. Let's say I want to do a Messier project and observe all the objects in the Messier catalog. All right, so we're going to do a search, and here we have all of our different options. We're just going to go into the Messier objects. Here are all of the objects on the Messier catalog. Again, if you go into Actions and Settings, you can create a new observing list from this search with a single tap, just right there and the list has been created. So now if I go back and I look at my lists, see right there we have the Messier objects with all 110 objects in them. 
Again, it's displayed just as before. You can sort these, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can also do the same thing if you use what used to be known as the advanced search in Sky Safari 5, but now in version 6 it's called the planner. So you go to observe, planner, and here you can search for all kinds of objects by all kinds of different factors. So let's just do a really simple demo. Let's say I want to see open clusters, but I want to see them specifically. Uh, they've got to be fairly bright, so magnitude 10 or brighter. And I only want the ones over in Orion. So simply scroll, hit search. All right, apparently there are 11 open clusters, magnitude 10 or brighter in Orion. I can make everything on this list, on this screen, into a list, again, simply by tapping. Now, it's just going to give it a generic name, but you can go back and you can change that a little bit later. Okay, very last thing I want to show you. Let's say you've successfully observed an object on your list, like, okay, we're still on galaxies, so let's say we've, we've successfully observed Bernard's galaxy. So if you go selection, and let's say, yeah, I observed that. You can go in, you can create an observation. You can type in as much or as little detail as you want. Simply hit done to say, oh yeah, I saw this. And the really nice thing is, this helps you keep track of your observing projects. So watch this. We're going to go back to our list of galaxies. Okay, that was Hubble. And see up here at the top, it'll sort by the objects on the list which we've already seen and which ones we still need to work on. So here we can see I've done one out of these galaxies, and if I just want to know the things that I have left, I can display that too. So that filter is really, really handy for keeping track of long-term observing projects. This video ended up a little longer than I planned, but I hope it's helpful. Please support this channel by subscribing. I also have a channel dedicated to eclipses and solar viewing. For example, I have a preview of the 2024 total solar eclipse, which will sweep across North America on April 8th of 2024. So please subscribe to Totality Town as well. You can also follow me on Instagram at AstroZach, or in the fall of 2021, my Totality Town Instagram account will become public. Thank you again. I hope this video helps you get out and enjoy the night sky.